Can't wait for the backsplash to be up. I can't wait to see it stained and varnished and looking gorgeous. I can't wait to paint these bare cabinets. I can't wait to finish my upper shelving so I have even more additional storage. This one also needs to be finished. I finished caulking today, so all of that has been caulked. Once it is painted white, it will look so seamless and beautiful. All of this stuff is self-taught. Please do not take me as a professional. I am not a professional. I am just a mom who has an alter ego. That is that is it. And that backsplash though, <laughs> hey, that backsplash, that backsplash looks great. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to another Pom Pom Sisters YouTube video. This week during a handyman clearance takeover, we are still renovating the kitchen, but this week we will be talking about building those upper shelves that I just love so much onto the other cabinets that we previously installed in the kitchen. And we will also be talking about paint and what paint is great for painting kitchen cabinets. Let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so to install our upper shelves, these will be going on the sides of this top shelf right here. So I first cut the wood to uh, lay across here. I then go in with my nail gun and I just nail it down all around the perimeter. So all across here. And then I also do one in the very back and that secures it down to the top of the cabinet. Now for the shelves. I cut these down to size. I measure from the wall to the base of the cabinet or to the top of the cabinet. The beam was going to be in the way, the new beam that we just installed on a couple of days ago. So I had to cut this one a little shorter to count it that the beam is gonna be with the beam. So that's gonna fit right there. As you see, I have three pocket screws. I have one that's gonna hold it to the wall and two that is going to be drilled into the wood. Pause, let's take a minute to mourn from a pitiful nail that just Aww. broke off. Oh. So that'll keep it standing and then we will cut a face to go in front of this because we don't wanna see that raw edge of the wood right here. And that is how we will get those shelves that we installed over there. So very simple. All you have to do is just know your measurements and cut it out. So I've already made the two sides for this top one right here. I'm just gonna slide in right here. And there you have it. My hole for the wall and my two screws for the bottom cabinet. It does have a little bit of wiggle room up there, which is fine because once we crown mold all that, you won't even be able to see it. And there they are, screwed in, as well as the other side. This is what it's looking like so far. Now it's time to put on the face plate. Just said this is two inch wood. And it is going to sit right on here. I have to cut it down so it's a little too long. It's gonna sit right on there just like that to cover up that raw edge wood. And then a trim will go here to cover up that raw edge wood right there. And that's my facing right there. As you can see, it is. There's my nail right there that I used with my nail gun to secure it to this. So it is on there nice and tight. And here is what it is looking like with the face plates now installed on the front pieces of the shelf. As you can see, the raw edge is covered. All right, so we finished installing the last one. Now this one was a little bit trickier. Um, I'm gonna go into a little bit of details on why it was. So. Had to install this pretty much bringing, cause of course this is this cabinet is brought forward. There's nothing but empty, empty cabinet space back there. There's nothing back there at all. And the wall of course is back there as well. So I really didn't have a backing to uh, this cabinet in order for me to install my wall. Cause you can see I have 
walls as my backing. So this one I had to actually cut a board to be the backside of this shelf. And I didn't want to pull out the refrigerator in order to install that back piece. You can see the screws are in the front, which is fine. I'm not bothered by that at all. I could have put them in the back behind the shelving if I just pulled out the refrigerator. But like I said, I didn't want to have those problems this morning. So I just went ahead and uh, screwed it through the front. So in order for me to keep a hold of this piece of wood so it wouldn't fall backwards or fall forward, I screwed in a scrap piece of wood, this right here, and I screwed it to the middle of that board to pretty much make as my handle so I could like hold the board without you know, it moving too much and to keep it balanced so that I could screw it in. That is all complete. The wood is now done. The shelves are done. All we have to do now is pretty much install my crown molding. Zoom out. So yeah, all we have to do now is just install the crown molding, do some caulking. As you can see, I have a pretty decent sized gap right there and right here that will be Field. I'll have to caulk that up there to make it look all nice and seamless, of course. And all of my scenes will get caulked. I had leftover crown molding or the trim molding. That's the I just wanted to kind of zoom in on the shoe trim that we installed. And as you can see, it is covering up that raw edge of the wood that was just exposed. The last time that we put up trend molding for these shelves right here, so I was able to complete both sides, this one and this one. Now cutting crown molding is, it can be very tedious, especially if, you know, you overthink it. And I definitely am an overthinker, so I made it harder than what it needed to be when I was first learning how to install crown molding on that side. So now I know how to do it now. I've watched plenty of YouTube videos. The best tool to use for crown, uh, cutting crown molding is going to be a miter saw. So you should invest in a miter saw if this is something that you're gonna try to do because it's going to be able to do those 45 degree angle cuts for you very easily without any problems so i don't have the crown molding i have some but it's not enough to complete this job it is right here so i'm going to cut i think i have enough to do this one i'm definitely gonna have to go to the store and pick up one more of this which is the shelves are looking awesome so let's go ahead and put this up there and we are done with the shelves after some caulking, here is how our shelves are looking right before we paint everything. Got done caulking everything. All the crown molding has been installed on both sides and the shelves look absolutely amazing. I went and picked up that last piece of crown molding that I needed, I only needed one uh, board of it. And then I went and also picked up the base boards as well, since I'm kind of already cutting that type of wood anyway, I figured I might as well go ahead. So I only picked up three boards of this. I'm not quite sure how much I need because I didn't measure. I kind of just went in there and bought it on a whim. So the base board is like three inches and a quarter tall and it's like nine sixteenths thick. So it's it's not too thick, it's not too bad. Um, I got it in white, cause I do plan on painting it. Um, so I, they, they call it primed. You can get it primed or you can get it unfinished. I just went ahead and got it primed so I wouldn't have to worry about having to prime the wood because I do have plans on priming before I paint, mainly because um, these are bottom cabinets and they will experience a lot of stains and the kids dropping stuff on them and scuffing them. So I want to make sure my paint is going to last. I'll need very, very durable paint. And we'll go into further detail on what paint I'll be using. I went ahead and just purchased the primed base uh, boards. I'm about to go out with my miter saw that's out there in the front yard. And I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these. Now cutting baseboard is a whole lot easier than having to cut crown molding. Crown molding can be very, very difficult. I'll leave the link to the video because I don't even know how to explain it to you guys properly. I don't feel like I could teach anybody how to do it. I just kind of like figured it out on my own. And then once I'm done placing the baseboards in, I'll be using my nail gun. There's my air compressor and my nail gun sitting up there on the counter. I'll be using that to install it. I'll be going in with, uh, I think they're two inch long nails. I'm about to change out my nails real quick. 
cut my wood and get this sh over with because I am just, I'm ready to just enjoy my kitchen. All right, so back to work I go. All right, so let's go ahead and talk painting our cabinets. So I went to Sherwood-Williams. They have very good quality paint to paint my cabinets. I chose the Proclaim and the All Surface Enamel. I'm lying, I didn't choose it. The guy in the store chose it for me. I just told him what I was painting and this is what he recommended. So for the Proclaim, I went in, that is the white paint that I use for my top cabinets. I did a dual color cabinet in my kitchen. My bottom cabinets is that nice navy blue color which is called indigo back it so I did research on what paints I should use for cabinets I read a bunch of blogs went on Pinterest and all that good stuff trying to figure out what was best for me and this came back as one of the most highly recommended paints and even the guy in the store also recommended it so this worked it works really good and then another big thing with coloring or painting i'm sorry paint your cabinets white in a kitchen they can turn dingy yellow real quick especially if the paint or the cabinets are around the stove where oil and grease and all that stuff kind of mixes into the paint and in the air and all that so i will say that i haven't experienced any yellowing with any of my cabinets whatsoever now with painting my cabinets, I want to also make sure I had a good primer. Now, I just went to my local Lowe's and I found a stain blocking primer that, and here it is right here. I purchased a gallon of this stuff. It is a very, very, very thick primer. So I will say a little goes a long way, but I was holding back like no, none at all. So I made sure I was slathering my cabinets with this primer. I only did one coat, but I did make sure I was pretty heavy handed and making sure that it got all into all the wood grains of the cabinet doors. I am about to start painting the cabinet doors. Um, those are usually the easiest to start painting. So I label each door so I can remember where to put it. As you can see, I have sink for the right, fridge on the left, and so on and so forth. Now we are just painting the front faces of these cabinets. Last time I did this, I did the front and the back, and it was just a waste of paint and time and effort because nobody sees the back of the door. And I didn't even paint the inside of the cabinets anyway but it's all good so this time I'm just painting the front where I'm about to start priming um, I still had some leftover I actually had a lot I might take the other gallon I bought back um, I still have a lot of leftover uh, primer that I used last time the Valspar stain blocking bonding primer and uh, the reason why I'm priming these first is because I want to make sure they are going to be very durable in their last we'll do that first put, apply the first coat and then we'll go in with our um, white paint the pure white that we use on the top cabinets I did mention to have these cones you just pop Prop them up on top of the cones and you'll be able to paint all sides of the cabinets just like so. Place that there and it sits above the table so that I'm able to paint all across it. And I don't have enough cones for all the doors that I have to do. So I saw somewhere where this lady just used some plastic cups. So I'm going to place these out as well and use those and throw them away when I'm done. So perfect and these were actually a lot more inexpensive so if you don't want to go out and buy these you definitely do not have to you can go to food lion walmart your local grocery store pick up a pack of these at party cups they're like two dollars and call it a freaking day so just a quick time lapse of me priming all of the kitchen doors and then later we will go into the kitchen and prime the cabinets. So if you are still rocking with us through this video, thank you. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video. And if you haven't already, I'm not sure why, but go ahead and subscribe to the Pom Pom Sisters because we still have more editing to go as far as the kitchen renovation. But Handyman Clarence, takeover is coming to a close we probably have two more videos to do and then y'all i will be able to finally reveal the entire kitchen and dining room renovations but thank you guys i just want to come in here and say thank you all right so as before you saw me priming the cabinet doors i went ahead and primed the face of 
all the cabinets and as well as the refrigerator enclosure and the upper shelves all of that has been primed so it is all nice and white now i am going to put on the first coat of pure white which is this color on the cabinets i'm gonna put those on all of the upper cabinet doors as well as the cabinets and the shelves themselves and uh, the back wall is supposed to be the indigo back it so that color that is back there that's that same color that is down here on the bottom cabinet so, it's coming along though we're gonna go ahead and finish it up OMG I finally finished the kitchen after two long years <laughs> Two long years. It looks junky and messy right now, thanks to my kids. It's just crazy how we have come up so far from our humble beginnings of first purchasing our home three years ago. And now after starting on our kitchen renovation two years ago, we now have a kitchen that is for our beautiful family of five but don't worry Pompeii gang that is not the end of the show next week come back and join us because we are going to tackle the dining room yes i will be installing a board and bat into the dining room to give it some pizzazz some stylishness to help with those bare, ugly, beige walls that we have. But thank you, Pom Pom Gay, for joining us on another Handyman Clarence Takeover. We will see y'all next week for the Dining Room's Takeover. Thank you and bye.